to the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition. And we have us a small little watch list today. And I'm going to hand it right over to Miss Vegas and we can get this thing started. Okay, well, first of all, happy Father's Day to everyone out there for Sunday, June 16. I hope you're enjoying your day with your family and your friends and have an amazing Father's Day to all the great fathers out there. Um, so we'll be talking about uh, IGC, AMD, Facebook, McDonald's, ZIOP, and Apron. I also just want to mention as well that um, earlier this week, uh, starting on Tuesday, there will be a FOMC meeting that starts Tuesday and ends Wednesday. So just keep that in mind uh, with regards to the market. Um, so let's get started with uh, the first pick of the week. So we're going to talk about IGC. Now IGC is one of the ones we've tried for the India Globalization Capital. You know, people make fun of this one because, um, you know, they, they Google their address and they're in some little shack. Um, but they did have news um, that their subsidiary, Holly Hemp's application, has been approved and that it has executed agreements with operators to grow and harvest uh, the hemp under the terms and conditions of the hemp program developed by the Arizona Department of Agriculture. So um, they did mention that they did select Arizona because they like the climate, the cost of labor, um, they like the local support, they like the logistics, they like the competition, they like the political environment. And they're saying that they're looking to employ strategy to plant year round so that it reduces the amount of acreage while taking full advantage of the hot weather to land dry the bio. So um, they're going to be looking at about 100 acres for extraction with additional acreage set aside for research and development initiatives. So Jim, over to you with that IGC chart, please. Oh yeah, well, like she said, that's good news in my book. and. I scalped this Friday about three times, three different times, calling support right around the 118 area. And then it ran up right into close into the end of the day, ran up to a high of right around 133 with a high of that day at 149. So this is the 20 day. And Miss, me and Miss Vegas was on this a long time ago and played this big run where it ran up to 1458. Then it got that sour news and just pulled back and been pulling back ever since. So I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. I'm going to give you the support levels. We're at 118. It's going to be your support down in this blue little channel, 117 to 118. If that holds, you'll be fine. If not, I think it's going to be oversold. I got a low support down at 102. And then we've got a resistance. If it does pull back, which I think it will, to that 118, and then I've got three or four resistances that I need to break. One will be 121, 127, and 132 with a high resistance of right around this 137. If we can bust past that 137, we'll get back up to 147. Now this is one that I like to trade first thing out of the gate. I'd like to see what's going on. And if not, it'll slow down, kind of trickle down, triple, trickle down a little bit, and then it'll regain its highs at the end of the day. But I'm just waiting to see what happens to this Monday. I'm currently not in it right now. I'm kind of hesitating or waiting for a whole pullback to the 121 area. And if that don't hold, that 118 is going to be a strong buy for me. And that is IGC. And I do think we'll have a bullish week out of it this coming week. But it depends on, like, the sediment of how people want to play it. The next one we're going to talk about, we talked about last Sunday, and that's AMD. Really yeah, like this. So one. you know what? AMD, I'm really liking advanced micro devices. I think it's ready for a swing trade. I think it's actually, you know what, there's I was reading some articles and they were saying that you know, people are saying, has this company actually caught up to Intel? And the answer is not yet. Um, you know, but um, you know, some people saying you know, Morgan Stanley was saying not yet. Um, but you know what, the company, don't forget, is um they're having at their next event, the next Horizon gaming event. Um, their product director, Travis Kirsch, was saying that, um, you know, they don't um, think that people would be buying an Intel processor after the launching of the Ryzen 3000. 
um, which is obviously going to debut uh, next month. They also have a new line of 7 processors, which apparently are going to be more affordable, very efficient, and a lot faster from the products that Intel makes at the moment. Um, which, by the way, Intel is struggling with their 10nm development. Um, so besides the new product line, AMD also has been, also been in the headlines because they have contracts with the U.S. government um, of the world's most powerful supercomputers, what they're calling, um, which is a return to the mobile market through an agreement, by the way, with Sam's. So you know what? Um, AMD uh, is back on track. Uh, looking for it to go for a swing trade. But I'd like to hear Jim's potential targets that he sees next because I'm looking at this, um, you know, really from an options perspective, but also from a swing trade perspective. For those of you that like higher price stocks, um, AMD looks ready for a swing trade. So, Jim, let's hear those next resistance points. I was really impressed with the, how it broke out and went from, and it broke up to the, that high of $34. That's the resistance we had to get to. It did get up there to 34.30. This is a year's chart that I'm looking at right now with the 34 EMA and the 200. I've been using these two moving averages here lately to play the pullbacks or the bounces off of on a one day minute chart. But we, it, they've, and analysts have never hit this price target right. None of them. It's usually lower. They're, none of them's never exact. They're never the same. But I've been pretty consistent on this trade from day one all the way down here from nine bucks, ten dollars. So we're going to pull this back. We did hit the first support Friday on it. I'm going to pull it up to a 20 day. And you'll get a better perspective. I think we had to pull back to the support after the huge breakout. Called this out last Sunday. I said it's going to pull back to the support level of 29.50 to 29.71. We come close. We did break the first support level of 30.40 and it did go below it. So I'm looking here at the 20 day chart. You see this peak we had right here back on uh, 6.5 and that's where I figured it would pull back to. And I did call this little support channel and it did kind of pull back to that 29.50. I think we're gonna create a new channel. I don't wanna see it go no lower than that 29.50 to 29.71, not at all. But right now we're sitting at a double bottom right here at 30 bucks. And I called this in a room at $30 last Friday. I said, we're going to hit 30. We hit 30.02. So now we're looking at it on a daily three-minute chart. They don't tell me too much, so I'm bringing it up to a five-day to give you your supports and resistance lines. So we pulled back to that 30.02 area, which was very beautiful Friday, and it did bounce up. And I called the reverse on it. It bounced up about 47 cents. So I think we're going to consolidate here right out of the gate. Then we're going to bounce back up and start hitting the consolidated area right around the 3147. That's where I think we're going to stop for the first day. We're going to break past the resistance of 3078. And we're going to create a little channel in here. The next resistance will be 3257. You see we tried to top that a couple times last week and just couldn't do it. And then the final resistance is going to be this channel between 3118 and 3405. So I do see a reversal coming out on this next week, and those are going to be the three resistances. They're going to be 3148, 3257, with the last resistance channel of 3318 to 3405, and that's what we got to break. To create new highs is going to be the 3430 area, 3424 to be exact. But I do believe if this is how I want it to play out. I want it to play in this channel for the next week and then go ahead and start bouncing back up. We did hit our target though of 34.24 and I have to give Miss Vegas kudos for sticking with this trade. We said it had to break past the $30 area and finally did last week, the week before last. And it was just a good call by her and she's been very consistent with the momentum of this trade. And I do believe with all the news that comes out, it makes it a very exciting trade also. The next one we're gonna talk about is Facebook. Yes, Facebook. Well, you know what? I don't have Facebook. I don't have time for Facebook. But a lot of people have Facebook. But you know what? Facebook, you know, as you guys know, it had a lot of pr bad press in the past. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff, you know, out there about the privacy. But you know what? This is what I like about Facebook. You know, crypto is coming. 
and the social network is going to release the details of its cryptocurrency this week. And you know what? It is not going to be like Bitcoin. Um, so the announcement will probably come on Tuesday. They're going to reveal its own cryptocurrency, which has variously been called Libra and also Global Coin. So very different from other cryptocurrencies, the new creation will not have been founded. Um, it's got backing of established companies. Okay, so let's listen to this. This is really important. This has endorsements of more than 12 corporations. And let me tell you at least four of them. Uber, PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard. So um, the fact that they're backing this up says a lot, okay? Um, so Facebook's new venture uh, appears to be somewhat removed from that image. Reports suggest the new currency will be overseen by a group of companies, which are the ones I've just mentioned. Plus, don't forget that's four. There's still another eight. Um, that I haven't told you about, but they have each invested about $10 million to join a consortium and to administer it. Um, also, another indication that the Facebook currency will be different is the fact that it will be pegged to a number of government-issued currencies in a bid to avoid the vast value fluctuations that have sometimes dodged other digital currencies. Um, so the Facebook project, this is a project, is expected to cost $1 billion and has been in development at least already for a year. It will actually enable or should enable Facebook's 2.4 billion monthly users to change dollars and other international currencies into its digital coin. Um, so this is just gonna be spectacular. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, um, as you guys know, he's the founder. He met the governor of the Bank of England, uh, Mark Carney last month to talk about his plans. And he's also discussed the matter with the U.S. Treasury officials. And um, what he said was payments is one of the areas where we have an opportunity to make it a lot easier. He said it should be easy. It should be easy to send money to someone just as it is to send a photo to someone. So I really like that saying these things. And um, I think that uh, this is probably going to work out quite well for Facebook. So I think that, um, you know, uh, as much as people may not like Facebook, uh, irrelevant, I think it's going to do well for the actual stock. Um, and also, uh, there have been some reports, I just want to make one last comment about this, um, there have been some reports that suggest that hotel websites like Booking.com um, and the payments technology company Stripe have apparently signed up for this. Um, so it is expected, again, that Facebook will be releasing a briefing on the cryptocurrency this week. So stay tuned for that PR, because if that gets released, we could see some serious action on Facebook. And I'm talking in a bullish way. So, Jim, let's hear about Facebook. All right. Hear about space. I mean, Facebook. We called it Spacebook. So here we are at the uh, year's chart. We did pull back to a yearly pivot point on it and it's rebounded quite quite briskly there from the 160 area 161 56 and you can see the area of pivot point where we pulled back a couple times this time it failed that that 200 ema before it hit it and ran back up and hit resistance so this was a very nice in three days i'm going to pull up this 20 day chart and when you see something like this on a chart this is a quite impressive for, to get in it we had the double bottom right here at 160.84 and with that double bottom she went ahead and created a good little run all the way from 160.84 all the way to a high or at least to the end of the day at 181.32 which i see after hours it's at 182.71 so i've got a support level on this and i'm going to call that support right here at 179.80 if it decides to pull back if not, you'll get in this other little channel at 176, 79 to 177, 74. Now, if she continues on up, we got some resistances we got to break, and they're going to be 183.86, 186.09, and then we had this high of 187.57, and I've got a high of right around 188.19. So, this was a beautiful run it had Friday, beautiful breakout. It kissed the 34 EMA and bounced off it on the 20 minute chart. So support level is going to be your low support 
it's going to be your second your first support no lower than I could probably bring it up to 180 25 180 let me put 180 in here between 170 179 80 to 180 30 is going to be your first support your second one is going to be your lower support it's going to be the 176 79 with your second support at 177.74 and actually I'm going to raise that up just a little bit to 178.34 so to deconfuse you the low supports 176.79 your second supports 178.25 and your first support is going to be in the channel of 179.80 to 180.30 with the resistant breakouts to 183.86 13 186.08 and then the final resistance of 188.05 and that's Facebook keep a good eye on it but when you see a pullback of 20 bucks on this trade it's time to start especially a double bottom appearance it's time to go ahead and get in it and hold it for a long trade and I mean it's constantly gets bad news but I think Miss Regis is definitely right about this crypto deal here that's going on yeah. You know, Jim, that article I sent you, can yep. you show that article? If you scroll down, there's a picture in the middle. I never did receive it, Miss Vegas. Oh, you don't have it? Hold no. on, let me send it to you. One second. Oh, hold on. I may not. I wanted to show the picture here. Yeah. Um, of all the different players in Facebook, this is just quite, quite fascinating. Oh, yeah. So let me Your big institutions you are definitely going to be on this. Well, I don't know about them, but you know they're a little bit skeptical. But um, let's let me show you this article. So here's the article, and uh, if you can open that up, yep, and scroll down to the middle where it has the picture. Okay, so here's the picture of all the different companies involved here, right? Yep. So you can see the ones I talked about: PayPal, Mastercard, Stripe, Visa. Uh, you see here all the investments eBay, in there, yeah. the e-com sites. So these are all like, you know, uh, you know, very interesting people involved in the project. And uh, we'll see what happens. But, you know, those are big names in there. Yep, I agree. Ain't no joke here. Nope. All right. So uh, let's move on and talk about McDonald's. <clears throat> so I just wanted to mention with McDonald's, been super, super bullish. I mean... You know, back in um, April, um, they did the Tesla Advisor Group, which was very optimistic about McDonald's. Um, they did talk about how McDonald's was up more than 18% over the past 12 months. This is back in April, while well, other stocks pulled back. But McDonald's held very well, which, by the way, was a very nice safety stock for a lot of investors. Um, and you know what they say, and I say this a lot. You know, people sometimes say, oh, what kind of stocks should I get? You know, like I'm looking to invest longer term. You always sometimes should think about like what are the brands out there that you actually use a lot? So some people really, you know, they take their kids to McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's has like a now a now health menu. I mean, I like the one dollar drink days because I like to get my iced coffee for a dollar. So, I mean, McDonald's is quite robust. I mean, they had fabulous earnings. They also have remodeled their restaurants. They've also been very optimistic about the experience of the future. And they've included investments in artificial intelligence as well as, um, you know, their app that they have going on. Um, the stock was rated back in April to go to a target of around 210. And look where we are. We're not far from that 210. That was a pretty good target that was given back then. Um, you know, McDonald's made a lot of improvements. I mean, they've improved their menu. They've improved their marketing. They've improved their use of technology and also the relationships with owners of the franchises of the restaurants. Um if you go, I don't know if anyone's been using the mobile apps, but I mean, I have the mobile app on my phone and every time the Raptors in Toronto was winning a game, um, they would actually give away free medium fries. So, I mean, that alone was a phenomenal, phenomenal marketing strategy on McDonald's part because it forced you to, you know, not forced you, but I mean, if you were interested to get the free fries, you would have had to download the app on your phone. 
And then of course, what's going to happen? It's going to make you go to McDonald's, get your fries. And of course, maybe if you go there and get your fries, you may order something else. Very, very smart marketing uh, campaign. And uh, boy, oh boy, they've been giving out a lot of fries here in Toronto for free to, uh, you know, commemorate the fabulous Toronto Raptors that are the NBA champions. We can't forget the champions. Um, so, you know what? I think a lot of investors have been waiting for years for McDonald's to work its way through to overhaul the restaurants. Now they see that all the spruced up outlets are seeing the benefits of higher traffic and also higher sales, uh, which has been great. Um, and uh, I think McDonald's is uh, still extremely bullish and uh, really liking the fact that, you know, a lot of locations, fine, it's a franchise, but you know what? They own the real estate. Um, so that's important to know that about McDonald's. So, Jim, let me hear about McDonald's chart because I, you know, as you know, I called an option trade in the room for 25 cents. And let me tell you, for those of you that were in the room that traded that option call, I mean, that went like to over a dollar. Very beautiful. Okay? So uh, it was a beautiful trade. Jim traded it. I think he made over 100% or yep. 100%. 90, 90% on he took, it. He took, he took his money and left. But you know what? The when there was an opportunity to pull back again, I called it on Friday as well. And on Friday, we played it at both 60 cents and then it pulled back down to 35. And then it was an opportunity to still buy it again. And guess what? It went all the way back towards the dollar. So um, this, the options was definitely profitable on McDonald's and I still am bullish on McDonald's. So Jim, can I hear some next resistance on McDonald's, please? Oh, yes. We did hit a resistance high of 206.39 uh, last might have been last Friday and let me pull up the 20 day this is the yearly chart here we keep a good eye on this trade every day we look at it first thing in the morning and we're going to pull up the 20 day now and I'm going to give you three support levels you see this knife we had these we had these three uh, three black crows and all of a sudden another big huge engulfing downward candle came in and it hit the low support just under 200 bucks I don't see it going down there at all but what I do see maybe is a support level of 203.83. That's going to be your 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 first solid support, or maybe your second. It could be your second support could be right down here at the 202.63 if that holds. But the resistance we do have to break is going to be the 206.11, and we do have an ascending triangle right now breaking out, and this could break on up to that 206.11 area, and that's up about oh. You know, we did have a high of right around the 205.83. So I'm going to pull up the daily three-minute chart now. And I'm going to see if I can find me another little pullback here, support level. I do play it off these two moving averages a lot. That's the 34 and the 200. So if it pulls back to the 200 on a daily one minute here at 204.97 right now, it always changes. That could be a support level for it to bounce on up and break this resistance up here. At 205.78, I need to change that so I can get that 205.78 on here. 205.78, that's what the resistance that we do have to break. Support level is going to be right here at 203.83, 204.53, and then another one right here at the 34 E, I mean the 200 EMA at right now at 2, I'd say just go ahead and average it out at 205. And I'm going to draw this trend line right here at 205 because I think that sounds like I just noticed this top right here and it tried to break it here once and it come close and it did break out here on the triple top and ran all the way up to 205.81. So McDonald's is our kind of place and hamburgers in my face. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ZIOP. What a comedian. Uh, I'll make sure to throw a hamburger in your face next time I see you. Next, do that. Uh, yeah, so ZIOP, guys. So, so ZIOP, so Ziopharm Oncology, you know, they had a news um, on June 11th that they announced FDA clearance of IND for Sleeping Beauty, ERCR T-cell therapy, whatever the heck that means. <laughs> so they basically announced the investigational new drug, which was, applic the application was submitted by the National Can Institute and they did receive clearance from the US um, FDA for clinical trial solid tumors to evaluate the T cell receptor um, that utilizes Xiopharm's beauty platform. 
Um, so they've partnered uh, in a cooperative research and development agreement uh, under the direction of the Dr. Rosenberg, who's the chief of surgery branch of the NCI, which supports the clinical work. And as I mentioned, NCI means National Cancer Institute. And they're going to um, look to evaluate a non-viral approach to manufacturing the TCRT with the Sleeping Beauty platform. Um, so that was good. The stock did go into a 52-week high, also made a pocket pivot, so might be watching this definitely for a continuation. And uh, Jim, let's hear about the chart on ZIOP. Yeah, I like this last week run up for all the way from 398 all the way up to the 552 area. I so, know, that was a beautiful move. It's a beautiful weekly run. So let's pull this up on a one year, just kind of get a glance at it. We are at a 52 week high at 552 and it did pull back to a 519 support. It closed at 522. So now it's after hours, it's at 536. You see it kind of con consolidated here in this little channel between 404 and 478. Actually, you could lower that just a little bit, down a little bit. But I'm going to pull up the 20 day now and show you what I see attractive about this trade. That's not the 20 day. We got to have the 20 day. We have two trend lines on this thing. One, it could pull back and knife to 484 or follow this bottom trend line here that I created from this run up or it could go ahead and break this ascending triangle engulfing pattern right here and break the 542 area and then have the resistance break out of 552 on a year's chart so I'm liking how this last two days have built this up that's a strong little ascending breakout channel we got to break the 542 to get to the new high of a double top of 552 if not it can pull back to support levels and I have three of them. I have 519 and always remember I use the uh, 34 and the 200 on a daily one minute and I'll show you that in a second. So we have the 519 as the first support which is real solid. 499 is your second and then maybe oh I see something down here at the 490 area. So that 490 and then low possibility which I don't see 478. And I play the pullbacks a lot of times, you know, I'll wait in patience and then I'll jump in it and usually scalp it or hold it for a swing trade for a day or two, no longer than that. So let's pull up the daily one minute. We did pull back to that 519 area and after hours we ran up to 536. So I still think this is very bullish and I'm going to draw a trend line right here at 552 and that's the resistance we got to break. And that is ZIOP, going to be bullish into it next week. Hopefully the volume will keep up. And it did have a volume spike at the end of the day. And this is the one that I've swung. I'm taking a little risky challenge on this one for myself, and that's called Apron. Miss Vegas, you have anything you'd like to say about Apron? Yeah, I do. So uh, they did announce a stock split, as you guys know, Blue Apron. Uh, the board of directors actually re approved a reverse stock split, and the stock split is going to be 1 for 15, and that takes effect tomorrow. So, uh, you know, obviously sometimes stock splits happen, and, you know, a lot of the reasons it's one of two things. Either they don't want to do an offering and or, you know, they do it so that they can regain compliance. And because the stock's been trading under a dollar, this is why they're doing the stock split. So anyone that has shares of the stock, um, you know, so if you had uh, 15 shares, you will now just have one share as of tomorrow. But obviously the price and value of your stock will be um, at the converted split rate. Uh, so that also brings the float down. So it makes it a little more attractive. Uh, it's going to be uh, now about 6.4 million shares versus the 96.4 million shares. Um, so that's interesting. There will be no fractional shares issued in connection with the reverse stock split. Um, so this will start tomorrow. So normally what I like to do whenever there is a reverse split, I like to look at what the stock is trading in the morning. And then I like to look at it um, for a swing trade. And part of the reason I like it, um, well, I, I mean, I don't like necessarily the actual stock, but I mean, I, I like trading reverse splits is because usually when a reverse split happens, um, the float is obviously a lot lower. So number one, I like the fact that the float's going to be low. But the other thing is that a lot of times when there is a reverse split and you actually buy the stock on the day that the reverse split takes 
effect. So um, you'll notice, even if you don't buy the stock, just keep a watch on it. Um, you'll notice sometimes the company will issue an actual PR, uh, but not necessarily the same day, but sometimes a few days later, sometimes a week or two later. But it's very interesting calculated how they do this um, and how they issue reverse um, uh, actual PRs uh, on a stock that just had a reverse split. So I'll be looking to look to do a swing trade on this stock in anticipation of a potential PR coming out shortly thereafter. So I will uh, be watching for this. And if you're not in this trade um, next week, not to worry, uh, definitely keep it on watch because let's just see if it's actually true that usually after reverse splits, there are PRs that are released. So Jim, let's hear about Aprons. Yeah, chart. besides calling the IPO on Lyft and saying it was going to pull back to 55 bucks, and it did, $50, I felt the same way about Apron when the IPO went out on it. It opened up at 10 and ran up to 11, but I noticed right off the bat that they were trying to make a bunch of changes in Apron, and I said that's not going to be good for this IPO, and that's exactly what happened. It did pull back to a bottom low of 54.58 last Friday. So Miss Vegas and I were talking about this on Thursday after hours, and I jumped in at, at 58.99, thinking I could get me a little bounce play on it, and it didn't happen. So I bought more at 55.42 to cost average down. So I'm sitting at probably about a $40 loss on it right now and I'm not too scared about that but I'm going to be on watching this thing first thing come Monday and I'm going to see how it reacts on this split usually like she said it's not a positive thing on reverse splits because they need to get back into compliance and they did receive a letter but also it brings it into a lower float and it brings a lot of institutional buyers attention that maybe want to go ahead and get in this trade and and, and see it run up but it is under new management which I like that idea too so this is apron we're gonna see what happens on it Monday morning and I'm gonna be watching it all day along with the other ones that we have on the watch list plus more and I keep a running watch list every week of stocks that have broke out and I usually play the dead cat bounces on them or the pullbacks so I have a nice list of them if you ever want to get into our room and follow us you can go to our website we do have a little place here on the website that you can sign up and join the room. It's a free chat service. And we also have a Twitter link over here on the right with Miss Vegas and I's stock twit link. You can follow us on them. And this is our Twitter link. You just hit that follow button and you can get updates that Miss Vegas posts throughout the day. You see she put her Happy Father's Day on here. It was the last thing she posted. She's She really loves her dad and, and, and I, I'm very fond of that. And uh, and that's it for the aftermarket report. And Miss Vegas, okay, you have anything you want uh, to close no, up with? So I just I just want to say that uh, t I just want to again congratulate Canada for the Toronto Raptors championship NBA. I mean that is the first time in history of the Raptors um, that they finally won the NBA championships. And so I got to just mention that Toronto is going to be taking over the streets um, tomorrow. They're going to have a humongous, massive um, Raptor parade. And this is going to definitely um, be a big event. It actually starts tomorrow. And believe it or not, Jim, yep. there are Raptors fans already camping out downtown Toronto to get a spot to be part of the parade viewing. So um, they're also, the uh, team just came back to Toronto. They were out in Vegas this weekend celebrating. Um, they just arrived at the Pearson Airport. I believe it was actually uh, last night um, but uh, or this morning. And uh, they were greeted by dozens of fans at the airport. Um, you know, they've just been amazing that they're the first franchise outside the U.S. to win an NBA title. And you know what? Congratulations to, I gotta say, Golden State Warriors in Oakland, California. I mean, they put up a good game, a good fight. Um, they were really a great team also. And they're former champions too. So you know what? Uh, congratulations to them for even making it to the finals again. Uh, so great. It's going to be the parade will start at the exhibition place in Toronto. It's actually going to travel eastbound on Lakeshore Avenue. 
before heading north on York Street, and then it's going to go to University Avenue. Uh, the procession will then briefly travel on Quinn Street and end at Nathan Phillips Square outside Toronto City Hall. So for those of you that are Canadian or in town for Toronto's Raptors Parade, uh, you can just head out to Nathan Phillips Square and you'll see all the festivities going on tomorrow. This is just fantastic. We, you know, Canada just hasn't had any action like this since 1993 when the Toronto Blue Jays baseball team won the World Series. So this is massive, massive excitement going on. So on that note, I wish everyone a phenomenal Father's Day. Fabulous weekend. Go, go, Toronto Raptors. Congratulations, Canada. And see you all tomorrow, guys. Have a great trading day. All right. This is the finishing up of the Sunday's edition of Vegas and Jim Market Report. Today's date, 6, June 16th, 2019. And we wish everybody a great trading week next week. And we love stocks. We'll